18 out of the 22 members of the Zamfara State House of Assembly have voted in support of the motion seeking to impeach the deputy governor of the state, Makdi Gusau. Now, the Zamfara State House of Assembly had begun the motion when the deputy speaker of the House, Musa Bawa, during plenary submitted a document requesting the impeachment of the deputy governor. Gusau had parted ways with Governor Belo Matawali after he refused to join the governor and other elected officials in Zamfara in defecting to the All Progressive Congress, APC, in 2021. They had all taken their offices on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, in the 2019 election. Now, the lawmakers had threatened to impeach Gusau for allegedly holding a political rally amidst killings in the state, but he had denied any wrongdoing. Well, joining us to discuss this and more is Bala Mohamed Mande. He is um, the chairman of the People's Democratic Party in Zamfara State. Thank you so much, Colonel, for joining us. Thank you. Great. Um, let's start by, you know, backpedaling to what it, all that has led up to this. Um, a lot of people are, are saying that this was going to be done one way or the other this was going to happen knowing that there's never really been an antecedence of a governor being in one political party and his deputy on another uh, and they did not see this marriage lasting long so um what was the pdp hoping for well first of all let me correct you when you say there has never been an antecedence where a governor is in one party and his deputy is in the other party during the time of uh, Governor Wamako of Sokta State, he was in the all at uh, the Progressive Congress, and his deputy Shagari was in PDP, and that's how they stayed in office until the end of the term. So that is just the correction I want to how make. How cordial was that marriage? That's that's where my point is. It obviously would not be a cordial relationship, being that the parties have different agenda, obviously. We wouldn't know how cordial or how uncordial it was, but they managed to keep it to themselves. They managed the situation is unlike this one where the governor is pushing members of the House of Assembly to impeach the deputy simply because the deputy did not defect to APC with him. That is just the crime of the deputy. And the deputy has the right to choose where he wants to belong. That does not invalidate his mandate as a deputy uh, governor. Now, um, I remember when um, the governor at the time um, had moved to the APC, the PDP had threatened uh, that they were going to take the matter to court, being that um, the circumstances which brought the um, Belo Matawale and his deputy to office was through the court system. Um, but where is the PDP on that issue now? What is the court saying on this particular matter? We went to court. As a matter of fact, it was the National Secretariat of PDP that went to court. If you could recall the judgment of the Supreme Court in 2019, it invalidated all the votes of APC because APC did not conduct a valid at the primary election and therefore they were non-existent for the election mm -hmm. so all the votes were thrown out and the ruling was that the party with the second highest valid votes should form uh, i should take the election at all levels at the state house of assembly uh, national assembly and at the governorship that was the ruling of the court. The court didn't name anybody, but it named the, the party that came second with the highest valid vote. And so PDP came second, and that is why all our members went to the National Assembly, House of Assembly, and we got the, um, we got uh, the governor and his deputy. So we have gone to court to interpret that judgment. Does Bello Matawale has the right to take the mandate that was given to PDP to another party? Do the members of National Assembly and members of State House of Assembly have the, the, um, the right 
to take the mandate that was given to PDP to another party. They became members of the National Assembly and he and, and State House of Assembly and Matewale became the governor because he was in PDP. If he was not in PDP, he wouldn't have been the governor. And all members of the legislative houses wouldn't have been there. Mm -hmm. but because the mandate was given to PDP and they were there, so that's how they go to the positions they are holding now. I just want to move on a bit, um, you know, to the issue as we speak. Now, there have been allegations leveled against the deputy governor saying, first and foremost, the most obvious is that he held some form of um, um, a party event, a political event, while there was insecurity. I mean, the whole country does understand the security situation in Zamfir State. Uh, but the deputy governor uh, at the time had said or denied that he never participated in any of these things during um, the insecurity situation. But other than that, they're saying the House of Assembly is calling this some form of misconduct. What do you have to say about this? And I'll just quickly like to put in there that um, the, a member of the BOT in the People's Democratic Party had called this impeachment process a misplaced priority. Maybe you can help us understand why um, the, he would term it that. You see, the deputy governor did not conduct any rally. When the saga was going on, and the governor came, the deputy took leave. And when he was coming back, his supporters went and received him and escorted him straight to his house. He did not conduct any rally. They didn't go around the city of Gusau. They didn't go to anywhere. They just uh, welcomed him to Gusau and followed him to his house, and that is it. But you know, when a government wants to to impeach a person, they can make mischief. They can say anything. And let me tell you, it was the APC that had been conducting rallies in the town. It, before the arrival of the deputy governor, we have records. I can name names. But be that as it may, you know that this court is, this case is before the court. And the court made a ruling that all it ordered all parties to maintain status quo antebellum until the motion on notice has been heard and determined so you're saying that, that what really the apc or, or what the members of the house of assembly are doing are in one way or the other uh, opposition to what the court has said is that what you're saying of course. They are working directly in collusion with the court judgment, with the court order. Rather. They are in collusion. They collide. They are against the court order. And we wait to see what the court will do on this. Let's talk about the ambition of the um, deputy governor. There was a lot of bickering back and forth between the governor and the deputy governor. And I remember, uh, I, I may not be able to quote him uh, exactly, but he did mention the fact that he would never allow a son of Gousseau to take over his office. He's talking about, and this hinted more like um, that the deputy governor had an ambition to run for governor. Would you like to shed light on this? No, no, no. You see, the deputy governor had the right to aspire to become anything in this country. There is no law stopping him. But the fact is that the governor busted out that, you know, it was about insecurity. So he busted out that if he knew that if he stepped down, he resigned, it was not the son of Ali Gusau who would become the governor, he would have resigned. He was referring to the deputy governor. And the deputy governor immediately sent a word to him. He replied him that he was ready as deputy governor to resign. Let the governor come. Two of them should resign together within three days if that would give respite to the state. And up to that now, up to now, since when the, uh, the deputy uh, governor sent that reply, the governor never spoke about it again. 
he has kept mute only for him now to go back and wish members house of assembly to fabricate charges that do not exist against the deputy governor so that they can now uh, um, initiate impeachment process we are not fighting against impeachment process because we know the court has owed that all parties to maintain status quo antebellum until the motion in notice is heard and determined. But then, but then we have a House of Assembly, just as I asked your National uh, Publicity, Deputy Publicity Secretary just a few minutes ago. The party, um, the APC, does have majority, a majority in the House of Assembly, which means that one way or the other, this is definitely going to be against uh, the Deputy Governor. What, so I'm wondering, whether it's in court or not, it does not stop them from going ahead with this. So what are you preparing for, knowing that the, go the deputy governor might just be impeached, being that the APC does have the upper hand in the House of Assembly and going forward? Um, what will be the next move of the PDP in the state? If the members of the House of Assembly don't have respect for court orders, we do believe others have, and they will not cite the wrongdoers. Um, we, like I've told you, also have gone back to court to make this complaint. And um, so we wait and see. You know, the fact that they are a majority does not mean they will be right. Doesn't mean they will be right before the law. All right, finally, uh, I want to ask, um, the issue of insecurity has been a front burner issue uh, for Zamfara State. Even though now the, the, the governor obviously is in opposition and the deputy is in the PDP, um, what is the PDP pushing for making, to make sure, uh, I mean, or how is the PDP pushing to make sure that the issue of insecurity in Zamfara State uh, becomes a thing of the past? We hear, you know, these stories coming from Zamfara State and being that Governor Bailo has moved to the APC, uh, one would expect that it would just be, the onus would be just on the governor, but then the PDP does have a role to play now that you're a position in the state. You see, the governor said he was moving to APC so that the federal government and other agencies of the, the federal government will help him to contain the insecurity. I tell you one thing, since he moved to APC, the insecurity situation has become worst in the state. Very, very unbearable. It is so bad in, in everywhere. Even in Gusev, people are not safe, talk less of rural areas. We, as a party in the opposition, we are sensitizing people. Since we are not in government, but we sensitize them, we advise them, and we push the government to do the needful in order to made the insecurity in the state. Well, I want to say thank you, retired Colonel Bala Mohammed Bande is the PDP chairman, uh, party chairman in Zamfara State. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Colonel. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break now. And when we return, I will give you my take. Well, here's my take. Campaign season is obviously upon us, and many have declared their interest in running for different public offices for diverse reasons. Political parties are strategizing and re-strategizing, defections here and there, crisscrossing for personal party and sometimes even selfish reasons. All of this is in a bid to grab hold of power, as we all know. Now, we, on the other hand, are very good at complaining and crying blue murder, you know, but are you a member of a political party? I always ask this question. Do you think that you should join one? Or are you of the opinion that politics is a dirty game and you don't want to be soiled by it? Because if the opportunity is presented to you to join a political party, whatever it may be, would you join it? Now, well, your response will determine who you think should emerge as the flag bearers in the different political parties and who would eventually lead us. So until we begin to get involved in partisan politics, in our own little way, whether at whatever level, the Nigeria that you and I want will never be a reality. So let's stop kidding ourselves and start taking the ball by the horn. And that's my take. And to close up the show tonight, we'll take a few highlights of the week. I'm Mary Anacon. I'll see you on Monday. Have a good evening.
with regards to the electoral laws well you know i do not care too much about those laws as much as i care about uh the human resources that are going to conduct elections and INEC as it is presently composed is made up made up of people who don't have the credibility to conduct free and fair elections i'm not interested in zoning i hope that nigeria would continue to search for competent Nigerians who can run this country effectively, efficiently, uh, in, a, in a just and egalitarian manner, um, so that these ethnic jingoists uh, will not have a say in how we run our lives. We have uh, done this whole rotational presidency for 20 years now. We've taken the presidents, Nigeria has taken the, the ruling class has taken the presidents to, to as many places as possible. Uh, but what they, they have not taken the presidency to is the zone of competency, zone of justice, uh, zone of uh, men of integrity. Uh, so if we make the mistake again of zoning to another incompetent character simply because of uh, uh, the location of his village, well, you know, we will regret it. So, uh, we are saying that what obtained about 60 years ago cannot confidently obtain now. So, with respect to grazing roots. As a matter of fact, we are in a modern civilization. Modern civilization does not really give room for somebody taking cattle from the north down to the Paracourt. Efforts must be made. These people, these boys that are taking these cattle, they, they should go to school. In fact, when you look at nomad, uh, pastoral nomadism, it's one that took place about 100, 200 years ago. There's no civilized world today you find the uh, people uh, following cattle. It's a great deal of reform required in the national security sector, especially with the police. I don't see any serious reforms going on. Where I would have said maybe a lot of money is going on into training, this, that, and so on. No. In nearly every state where today we have uh, 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 the military complementing the effort of the police on ground. We know how much state governments are spending. And that's why some of the governors are saying, allow us to have our own police force. And then this money, or uh, this entire money we are pumping in, in the various, at the various state level, will go into our own police. The, the federal government could lay out the guidelines, but not saying give them a free hand. Our politicians are not as mature as that. Well, they are like children, they are like related people. Children. These are shying away from um, rotation of power because um, uh, in less than, uh, say, um, one year to the post, none of the parties, to the best of my knowledge, have come out to say we are picking our candidate. Or this is the particular region where we'll be having our presidential candidate come from, whether it is the APC, the DDP, and all other small parties. None of the parties are doing that, are saying that at the moment. So I think it is actually wrong for the Agakonia uh, I mean the governor of Ondo State, to categorically say that if any party feels a northerner, the southerners won't support. And I must say this: you see, democracy, whether we like it or not, is a is a is is is, is a is, is a government of uh, numbers. Is a product of numbers. I mean to say, and. The fact is that the northern part of Nigeria still holds sway in terms of voters' power. So, it holds on any candidate, whether it's coming, the candidate, particularly candidates coming from the south, to romance, excuse my word, to romance the north. Like what have Tinubu doing at the moment, you know, for every little a thing here and there in the north he was in zamfara before he traveled to london and so on and even the vice president whether he won he has declared or not but you see him romanticizing the north he was in Kano state for a public lecture two days ago but he used the opportunity to visit the uh, the family of the of, of hanifa that was murdered some um some some weeks back so uh, i think it is very important that any candidate particularly that wants to win the presidential election must embrace the north.